Here in this chapter, we're going to explore some of the new ways that we can work with layers in the Layers panel in Photoshop CS6. And here in this movie, I want to focus in on how we can work with groups and layer style effects. You'll notice that I have this background layer, then two text layers above it. Let's say that I want to apply a layer style effect to both of these layers. Well, in the previous versions of Photoshop, this was really impossible to do this at the same time. We could obviously work on one layer at a time, but let's say we want to apply these effects to both of these layers at the same time. Only one layer style effect applied multiple places. Well, to do that in CS6, you can take advantage of using groups. You can go ahead and click on this group icon here, and to add layers to a group, just click, drag, and drop. And here you can now see both of these text layers are applied to this or are part of this group. If I click on the visibility icon of that group, well, it hides both layers. Click on it again, and it shows both of those layers. Well, if I want to apply a layer style effect to both layers, all that I need to do or all that you need to do is to click on the group there, go to the FX icon, and then choose the effect. In this case, I'll select Drop Shadow. Then I'll go ahead and customize the drop shadow just a little bit here so you can see that. And you can see below that this effect is being applied to both layers. Let's click OK in order to be able to see that. Again, because the effect is applied to the group, whatever is inside of this group, well then, it has that layer style effect. Even more what we can do is we can further customize things. Let's say, for example, that we really want a brush stroke around this layer but not the other one. We'll just target that layer, go back to that FX icon, and then choose perhaps brush stroke here. We'll go ahead and add that brush stroke to the outside of those letters there to this layer, and then click OK. In other words, you can stack up these effects so that you can have effects on particular layers which just apply to those layers, or you can apply an effect to a group. That effect, then, is applied to all of the layers inside of that group. As a photographer, there are a number of different situations where it's helpful to know how to work with multiple layer types whether you have a photograph or a text layer, and also how you can work with layer style effects and how you can organize all of your layers into groups and perhaps how you can add color layers or maybe how you can work with creative blending. Well, here in this movie, we're going to look at all of that. Well, first what I want to do is open up some more space for my layers panel. To do that, you can double click on the tab group name or the panel group name in order to collapse it as I'm doing here. Okay, well, in the Layers panel, you can see we have a few layers. Each of the layers has a layer style effect. We know that we can hide or show this effect by clicking on these icons here. Well, a lot of times, you'll want to do this more quickly. Well, now in Photoshop CS6, what you can do is click on one layer, hold down the Shift key, then click on another. And if you have multiple layers selected, all that you have to do is to click on one layer style effects icon here, and it will either reveal or show all of those effects. Click again, and you can hide all of those. Well, what about those situations where you have layers kind of interwoven throughout all of the layers you have in your panel? You don't want to click on all of those in order to collapse or to show those effects. You can use a modifier shortcut to do that. Here, let's go ahead and click off of those layers. Then if you press Option on a Mac, Alt on Windows, and then click on this icon, it will then expand or collapse all of the effects that you have in your Layers panel. This can be really handy because sometimes seeing all those effects, well, it can just be a little bit confusing. It can be too much. So again, it's Option or Alt, Option on a Mac, Alt on Windows, and then click on that icon. Another way that we can work with our layers is to add what are called color labels. If you click on one layer, you can go ahead and right-click or Control-click it this will open up this contextual menu. Now there's a lot here, but what I'm looking for is the layer or the layer color here. I'll give this layer a red label. You can use these labels in order to organize your layers panel. 
You can also do this to more than one layer at a time. Hold down Command on a Mac Control on Windows and click on multiple layers and then right click or control click and here you can choose a label color in order to add that label color to your layers. All right, well let's take a look at also how we can work with blending and some other creative aspects of working with layers. Well here I have this leaf layer. I want to duplicate this leaf layer and there's a great shortcut to do that. On a Mac it's Command J, on Windows that's Control J. You can see I've just duplicated or copied that leaf layer. Next with the Move tool selected, what I'm going to do is go ahead and just click and drag this off to the side. Next I want to copy that again so I'll press Command or Control J and then click and drag this off to another position. Well now that I have this, what I want to do is I want to apply a blending mode to each of these layers. Well rather than doing this one layer at a time by going to the blending mode option and selecting that, what you can now do in Photoshop CS6 is select two or more layers and apply a blending mode to all of those layers at once. Let me show you what I mean. Well here we'll go ahead and click on these other layers, hold down the command key on a Mac, control key on Windows, and click on those other layers there. Next, navigate to your blending mode pull down menu and choose the blending mode that you want to try. I'll try soft light or maybe overlay. This gives me kind of an interesting texture or background. All right, well let's say that we want to take this even further. Well right now all of these layer style effects are just kind of getting in my way. So you remember the shortcut to hide those. Hold down Option or Alt and click on this icon. All right, that's much easier to look at. Next, I'm going to group these layers together. So while they're still selected, I'll press a shortcut to create a group. That's Command G on a Mac, Control G on Windows, and I'm going to name this group Leaves. Well, now that I have this group, I want to duplicate the entire group. And this is new inside of Photoshop CS6. We can use that same shortcut that we had previously used in order to duplicate a layer. You remember that one, right? It's Command or Control J. Think jump these contents to another layer, or in this case, jump the entire group to another group here. We have now two versions of this group. We could then use our Move tool and click and drag and reposition this. Say we wanted to create kind of an interesting texture in the background. Press that shortcut again, Command or Control J. You can press this multiple times and you can see how what we can do is we can start to build up this effect. And again, what's interesting about this is this gives us the ability to work with these layers in some really fascinating ways. Well, let's say then that what I want to do is I want to expand all of these and I realize that I want to try out some different blending modes, right? But now they're inside of all of these groups and let's even say we open up the layer style effects and we're scrolling through all this and it just looks confusing. Well, there is a great new feature inside of the layers panel. And it's a feature which allows us to filter what we're seeing. If you look up at the top of the Layers panel, you can filter by kind and you can click on these different icons. One of the icons you might want to try is this one here. This allows us to filter based on pixel-based layers. Now in this case, it's going to show us all of the leaf layers. So let's click on that option. Now here what you can see is it removed all of those groups. I no longer see the groups. It also removed the two text layers. Let's collapse the layer style effects so we can see this even more clearly. I'll go ahead and collapse those effects. Do you notice that all of the groups are now hidden? Let's click on the icon again. Well, here they are all back. Click on this again, and you can see, well, it kind of removed temporarily all of the grouping. What's great about this is it gives me access to these layers. So I could click on one, hold down the shift key, and then click on another. In this way, I could experiment. I could say, well, I want to try a different blending mode, perhaps exclusion. Well, that doesn't look very good. I could keep going through this until I find something that I think looks interesting. Maybe we'll just try soft light, a little bit more of a subtle effect. Also, let's say that I want to lower the opacity of all of these layers. Well, now that I have them all selected, I can go ahead and decrease their opacity. In other words, we can use this filtering view in order to access layers, even layers which are nested inside of different groups. Now once we've finished making our adjustments, all that we need to do is to click this icon again and it will bring everything back to normal. So as you can see here, there are some really 
fascinating and powerful ways that we can start to work with layers. And if you didn't catch any of these little tips, it may be worthwhile to go back and to rewatch this movie. Because layers in Photoshop, well, they're huge. As photographers, we spend so much time working in layers, learning how to more effectively work in these layers and also how to more effectively organize them and manage them and modify them, whether for creative or just corrective purposes, well, it can really help out your workflow by leaps and bounds. In the next few movies, we'll be working with this document here. And this document is the beginning of a creative project from one of my other training movies. Yet here what we're going to focus in on is how we can work with layers inside of Photoshop CS6. In particular, in this initial movie, we're going to take a look at how we can do some blending, how we can use those blend if sliders, and also how we can more effectively rename our layers. Well, let's start off by taking a look at the layers in this document. You'll notice we have a number of different layer groups. The group that I want to focus in on is this one, Creative Adjustments. So go ahead and click on this triangle icon in order to expand that layer group. One of the top layers is titled Dandelion. I'll go ahead and turn on the visibility of this layer and then target it. And what I want to do is I want to blend this in into the background. There are a number of different ways to do this. One of the techniques that we can use is to use advanced blending using the blend if sliders. Now we've had this technique in previous versions of Photoshop, but what's new is that when you apply this technique to a layer, there's a new icon which shows up in your layers panel. Let me show you what I mean. Well, in order to access the blend if sliders, you double click to the right of the layer name. This opens up our blending options here. We can use these Blend F controls by simply clicking and dragging. As I click and drag, you can see it's revealing more of the image in the background. If you want your edges to be softer with this type of blending, well, you hold down Option or Alt, and then click on this little icon, and it splits this icon, and again, creates smoother transitions. Okay, well, let's go ahead and click OK. Let's apply that layer blending. Again, here, you can see there's a new icon. And really, the whole point of this is just to illustrate that we now have this new icon showing us that we've applied this type of blending. If ever you want to change that, we'll just double-click again. It opens up your blending options. And then here, again, you can make further changes to the type of blending that we have with this layer. Next, let's go ahead and click OK in order to apply that. Another thing that we can do with a layer is we can change its blending mode. We've seen this before, right? You can do this one layer at a time by going to your blending mode pull down menu and choosing the blending mode, say like soft light. But let's say that we have a group of layers that we want to apply this to. In this case, I have this layer branches here. I also have some other layers, texture layer, underneath that, this one that has some kind of grass and leaves there, another layer which has a tree branch on the left, and then finally the bottom layer which has these coffee stains. Again, all of these different layers might be nice to have some blending on them. I also perhaps want to name these layers so that I don't always have to guess and try to figure out which layer is what. Well, there's a great technique that you can use in order to rename your layers. Let me show you what it is. Well, remember that here on this top layer we have these scratches. Next underneath that we have the grass. And then finally, we have the tree branch and the coffee stains. Well, if you double click the layer name of one of your layers, you can go ahead and rename it. Here, I'll name this Scratches. Well, next, if I want to rename the layer underneath this one, all that I have to do is to press the Tab key. This then allows me to get access to that field, and I can rename that layer. Press Tab again, go ahead and rename that layer, and then press it one more time, and I'll name this one Coffee Stains. Well, if ever you want to go back up and rename one of the layers that are above, all that you have to do is to press Shift-Tab, and that will give you access to that field, and you can go ahead and add that. In order to exit this field, you can press the Escape key. Okay, well, now that we've organized our Layers panel, 
And now that we have all of these different layers, what I want to do is apply a blending mode, say to all of these layers here. Well, one way to do that would be to click on one of the layers, hold down the shift key, then click on another. Here we're selecting layers which are touching each other. And we've seen this before that what we can now do is we can go to our blending mode option and here we can choose a blending mode that we can apply to all of these layers. If we don't like the blending mode, well, we can just go back and choose another one until we find the blending mode that will work for our project. Well, in this case, the opacity or the intensity of these layers, it's just too much. Well, with all of these selected, as we've seen before, we can change their opacity by simply clicking and dragging this opacity slider in order to diminish it. If ever you want to work on just one layer, we'll just click on it, and then here we can go ahead and take that one down so that the texture is a little bit more subtle there. And what I'm really interested in having here with these layers is just a little bit of texture or feeling. I can also lower the overall group by clicking on the group name and then lowering that. Again, we're looking to make some subtle adjustments here, just trying to build up a little bit of texture or mood with all of these layers. Let's take a look. We'll click on this eye icon. Here is our before, and then now here's our after. Subtle, yet perhaps some significant or just kind of fun and creative adjustments. All right, well, now that we've made these adjustments, let's continue to work with this project, and let's do so in the next movie. Here in this movie, we're going to take a look at some of the new options that we have when it comes to free transforming a layer. And these options are great for photographers because we know that whenever we change the size of a photograph, we need to choose an appropriate image interpolation in order to maintain that layers or that image's integrity. Well, let's take a look at how we can do that here. Well, here you can see I have this branches layer. Let's work with a duplicate copy of this layer. To do that, press Command or Control J. Next, I want you to change the blending mode to normal and the opacity to 100%. Let's go ahead and do that by going to the blending mode pull down menu and then selecting normal. And then we'll take that opacity all the way up to 100. Now here you can see we have these tree branches. We can see through the branches in this case because it's inside of this group. And this group, well, it has a lower opacity. Well, after we've made those changes, if you simply click and drag this around, you'll notice that this is a really big image. We're just seeing part of it. Well, let's say that I want to make this image smaller. And I want to do so by free transforming it. Well, one of the ways that we can access free transform is by going to the edit pull down menu. And then here we can select free transform. There's also a shortcut that's command T on a Mac or control T on Windows. And again, when it comes to working with photographs and layers, we're using this command a lot. Yet when you trigger this, one of the things that you'll notice is you have changes in the options bar and you have something new. We now have image interpolations options. If you click on this pull down menu, you can see these options by cubic. We have smoother, sharper and automatic. Automatic is new to Photoshop CS6. This will choose the bicubic interpolation, which will work best for your transformation. We'll be talking about this more later when we take a look at image resizing. The other different options, well, it's a little bit hard to know what these do. Yet what I want to do here is show you a place where you can get some information about which one will work best for your situation. So before we free transform this layer, Let's go ahead and click off of that and just click this checkbox here in order to exit the free transformation. Well, next, let's go to the image pull down menu. And here we're going to temporarily open up our image size dialog. And we're doing this just to gain some information. We're not going to be using this dialog. Rather, we're just going to be looking at this menu here. Well, in this menu, we have these same controls. Yet now they tell us which control works best for different situations. In this case, bicubic smoother, well, it's best if we're going to free transform or make something bigger. Bicubic sharper, on the other hand, well, that will be best if we're going to make something smaller. 
Vicubic Automatic will choose the option for us. Well, now that we know this and now that we're a little bit more educated with these options, let's go ahead and cancel out of this dialog and go back to free transforming this layer. All right, well here we'll go to our edit pull down menu. We'll go ahead and select free transform. Well, in this case, because this image is really big, we can't see the free transform handles. So what you can do is zoom out. An easy way to zoom out is to press Command minus on a Mac, Control minus on Windows. As we do that, we can eventually see well, all of these free transform handles. Well here, before I start dragging these handles, what I want to do is choose an image interpolation. In this case, because this file is going to become smaller, what I could do is choose Bicubic Sharper or Bicubic Automatic. I'll go ahead and select Bicubic Automatic and then go ahead and hold down the shift key and click and drag these corner points. I'm just going to make this much smaller so I have this texture and this layer sitting on top of the image. And again, by choosing one of these options, what it will do is it will help maintain the integrity of that file. And when it comes to working with photographs on layers, this is paramount. It is so important. It can really change the difference of the way that you work with your photographs. All right. Well, to apply that, press Enter or Return, and then press Command or Control Plus to zoom back in. All right. Well, with this layer, we can now see that we've free transformed it. We've made these changes. But you know what? In regards to my overall creative project, I don't really like this layer. And a lot of times what happens in our layer workflows is we make changes and we hide the visibility of a layer. Yet, this layer is still inside the file. It's still taking up file size. Many times we'll have these layer documents and we'll have tons of layers that we're not using because we decided along the way that it wasn't the best adjustment. Well, in the next movie, let's take a look at how we can deal with layers like this and also how we can start to filter and find other layers. And let's take a look at how we can do that in a completely new way inside of Photoshop CS6. So go ahead and leave this document open because we'll continue to work with it in the next movie. Here we're going to take a look at perhaps one of the most powerful and helpful features in the Layers panel. And it's a feature which allows us to filter and to find our Layers panel. You know, one of the problems with Photoshop is that it's just a ton of fun. It's easy to get carried away and to create all of these different layers. Well, this new filtering feature can help you find and manage your layers in a really fascinating way. You may remember in the previous movie, we created this new layer, Branches Copy. Yet at the end, we decided not to use this layer. And you know, this happens all the time in our workflows. We get carried away, and at the end of our workflow, we have all of these layers that we're not using. All the visibility has been turned off. Well, it might be helpful to get rid of those layers in order to clean up our layers panel, and also in order to decrease our file size for our document. Well, we can now do that with the layer filtering. If you go to the top of the Layers panel, you'll notice you have a filtering pull-down menu. I'm going to start off by navigating to Attribute. When we do that, we'll see some options on the right. We can choose different attributes here. In this case, we'll choose the attribute Not Visible. This will then show me all of the layers in my document which have the visibility turned off. What you could do is you could then select those layers, then press Delete or Backspace, this would clean up your file and also decrease your file size. Well, how else can we filter or find layers? Let's go back to this pull-down menu. Well, with this image, one of the things that I realize at this point is while I've cleaned up my layers panel, I want to make a few more creative adjustments. And I know that somewhere inside of all of these groups, I have some sort of a color adjustment, but I just can't find it. Well, you can filter by kind. And let's say with this image, I want to make this more red. And I could go and select this icon, which allows me to see my adjustment layers. There's my color balance adjustment. Double click it, make the needed adjustment in this case to increase the red. And then I can close this panel and be on my way. In other words, 
This filtering, it allows me to see specific layers. Once I'm done with this filtering, well, you can either flip this toggle switch to disable this or turn it off, or you can click on the icon or the type of filtering that you applied. There are other types of filtering which might be helpful as well. For example, let's go down to blending mode. Remember when we previously applied a blending mode of soft light? Well, here we could choose a blending mode and then filter based on that type, and this will show us all of our layers with this blending mode. Here we might decide to click on one of these and perhaps increase the opacity of those layers. Or we could also change the blending mode. So again, this gives us this control to access these files or these layers rather than having to click through and find them. Another way that's really helpful to do some filtering is to search by the layer name. Here we'll go ahead and highlight that briefly. If you click on name, you can then type in a layer name. Here I know I have a layer named sky. I could type that in. Or we could search for other names. For example, you can just start to type out some words. In this case, I'll type out B for branch. Notice that it shows you all of the different layers which start off with this letter. Then I'll go ahead and continue to type out, and eventually it's going to get down to show me just this particular layer. The advantage of this is that, again, it gives you really quick access to your layers. Once you're done with any of this filtering, well, you can just flip this toggle switch to go back to an unfiltered view of your layers. So as you can see here, this new layering functionality can be really helpful. It can allow you to access and to find different layers. And this can be helpful whether you're looking to clean something up or make a change or correction to your file, or if you just want to creatively explore different options. So if you haven't experimented with the layer filtering, I definitely recommend you do so because I think it has the potential to be a great help to your workflow. Here in this brief movie, I want to share with you a few shortcuts which are helpful when it comes to changing the opacity and the fill of a layer, and these shortcuts are new inside of Photoshop CS6, we're going to be working with a type layer. Well, now that we know a little bit about filtering, rather than searching around in our layers panel to try to find this type layer, what I want you to do is to navigate to the top of the layers panel and to go to kind, and then just to click on the icon for finding all of your type layers. Well, here you can see we have the one type layer in our document, Let's turn on the visibility of this layer. This is made up of a few lines of text, and let's take a look at how we can modify the opacity and the fill of this layer. First, we'll do this by using the sliders. Well, we know that the opacity slider, what it will do is it will decrease the intensity or the opacity of the text and also the layer style effects that we can see here. This basically diminishes everything or it increases it, and we can see it all. The fill, on the other hand, what that allows us to do is to just change the pixel content of the layer. In other words, this amount will not affect these two layer style effects. As I decrease my fill, I'm just removing the type, and then now all that I see are these layer style effects. I can turn these effects on and off, or I can have them both visible. All right, well, how can we make these same adjustments by using shortcuts? Let's go ahead and take this back to 100%. Well, in regards to opacity, what you can do is you can press a number on the keyboard. If you press the 4 key, it will go to 40%. If you press 4-4, four, four, it will go to 44%. Yet, new is the ability to change the opacity in the fill all the way from 0 to 100. If we press 0 on the keyboard, it will go to 100%. Press 0 twice, and it will go to 0%. So again, let me repeat that because you'll want to write that down. Zero goes to 100, zero, zero goes to zero percent. All right, well, what about the fill? Well, the fill works the same way. If you hold down shift and then press a number like six or eight or four, it changes the fill to that amount. If you press shift zero, it goes to 100 percent. Shift zero, zero, that takes this back to zero percent. And here we could then modify this. Perhaps we want to remove that drop shadow just so that we have this text on top of this image. Now, let's say we want to decrease the opacity of this layer style effect that we have. We'll let go of the shift key, 
and then press one of the number keys. For example, let's try three for 30%. Here you can see we have this much more pulled back, or maybe even two or one for 10% or 20%. Again, just to have a little bit of a texture or element there. So as you can see, these new shortcuts, well, they finally give us this full range of flexibility, allowing us to change the opacity and the fill by way of a shortcut.